The RTX 4000 series graphics cards benefits just like the 3000 series GPUs from undervolting. And what this is going to do when you undervolt your GPU, it's going to give you better efficiency. That is, for the FPS that's coming out on your monitor, you're going to be saving power, which in my opinion, going forward with the PC gaming industry, it is the best way to go because not only are you going to be saving power, but you're also going to be prolonging the life of your hardware. Pretty important, especially when it comes to a graphics card as expensive as the RTX 4090. Though, today's video, we are going to be looking at two different games as well as a synthetic benchmark test to show the differences between power target and then also curve optimizer and then the normal settings, as well as the first benchmark that we'll pull up here which is the overclock scenario, which I don't recommend overclocking with any of the RTX 4000 series cards. In fact, I'm going to make a separate video on why I think this overclocking models that are being sold are nearly to the point where they're a scam. They're just trying to take extra money out of your wallet while providing what I feel is a worse experience for the end user. As we can see here, 500 watts and we're gaining 8% FPS on this Fermark benchmark. And this is the best case scenario for overclocking on an RTX 4090, where in games, even at 4K, we're starting to be CPU limited. So the overclocking just makes even less sense when it comes to playing games. Before we move on to the undervolting results, however, today's video is sponsored by VIP SCD keys. If you're looking to get Windows 10 activated with a single end user license that'll never be deactivated, then by clicking the link in the description below, you can get activated for as little as 15 bucks using that coupon code BFTYC. What are you waiting for besides the undervolting results? Get activated today with the links in the description below. So let's get on to the best case scenario and also in my opinion, the most practical and that is playing games. First of all, we'll pull up a Plague Tale Requiem where this game, we're gonna turn it on 4K DLSS quality. This is the settings I like to use when I was playing this game. But here's where if we go through the results, the out of the box settings, in my opinion, is inefficient versus either the 60 or 70% power target that DeBauer recommended in his video and also versus the curve optimizer where both these three settings in particular are giving quite a substantial gain in terms of power efficiency versus the normal out of the box settings. So in my opinion, you don't have to worry about missing out on something when it comes to undervolting the 4090 and in particular playing Plague Tale Requiem. And ultimately with the Plague Tale, what you'll see here is that the power target 70% and 60%, they actually won even versus curve optimizers. So in this particular benchmark, these two settings got the best power efficiency versus ultimately extracting the most value in terms of FPS out of your RTX 4090. Then we'll move on to the next title here, and this is Horizon Zero Dawn. And also after this benchmark, I'll explain the undervolting a little bit more in depth with the curve optimizer settings because you might be looking at the graph and going 950 millivolt what is this and what does this mean with these speeds but looking at these results shows that the curve optimizer in my opinion scored the best results here going up to 318 watts max and also scoring slightly higher fps than the normal out of the box settings but if we go to 70 and 60 percent they're actually uh, showing that their power limits are locking the card in and we're getting less FPS than Curve Optimizer. Though the funny thing with 60% was it really felt like the card wanted to draw more power constantly. So it did actually go over that power limit momentarily, but also I felt like the actual end result on the screen was suboptimal in terms of what I was seeing. And this happened at 50% even worse to the point where I could easily replicate the screen tearing that was happening in Horizon Zero Dawn. So in my opinion, the Curve Optimizer not only gave the best experience, but gave the best efficiency results in this particular title. But ultimately what you can see with 70% power target, for example, is you're getting a better experience versus the out of the box settings. And it's such an easy setting to change. Though the next benchmark here is definitely going to throw a whole curveball into the equation where we tested Fermark, but we tested it with two completely different settings. One was GPU memory bound, and then the other was also GPU core bound. So we'll show you the core bound results first because they actually show that when you undervolt, you don't gain really any benefit at all. So going from 100% to 90% showed the same power consumption because the GPU is getting maxed out in this particular benchmark, but then dropping it down to 80% 
showed that we're getting 360 watt and 238 FPS, and then 70% showed 204 average FPS, 315 watts, and then 60% showed 170 FPS and 270 watts. But the problem with 60% and also even when we went down to 50% was that there was actually frame spikes. It was stuttering. The GPU was finding it hard to run at these levels. And so if a game in particular is very GPU core bound, you could experience a bad experience with power targets and playing around with those levels. Also when it came to this single particular settings in this benchmark, it showed that there really wasn't anything to be gained by undervolting with curve optimizer or by power targets. Though onto the next test, and here is where we started loading up the MSAA, basically the anti-aliasing, which does put more of a strain on the GPU's VRAM, AKA the GDDR6X. Though what we'll see here with the curve optimizer setting is that we are gaining FPS over the out of the box settings. And we're also starting to beat that of the 70% power target. However, the 60% power target does come in here and do a pretty good job. But the next thing we'll talk about here is you've probably seen some examples already where I've tuned the memory with the curve optimizer because I believe that goes hand in hand. Basically what happens when you lower the voltage on the GPU core, you're then able to lower the temperatures because your cooler is going to be running cooler because there's less heat to deal with. And then you can basically get the same VRAM temperatures as you did without overclocking the VRAM. But ultimately with those results, they should speak for themselves where we saw a benefit to be had with either power target limiting or curve optimizer. I prefer the curve optimizer because as I saw in Horizon Zero Dawn, it gave the best FPS, but also managed to give me a very smooth experience. I found with power targets in certain scenarios, especially the lower you go around 60%, 50%, you can induce some kind of stuttering, though at 70%, it's a great setting like DeBauer recommended in his video. And in fact, I did one test in a Plague Tale where I set the curve optimizer with the power target and that actually gave out the best results. But one thing you may notice in my undervolting curve optimizer setting is that I've also tuned the VRAM. And the reason I'm doing this, especially versus out of the box settings, is because now that we're saving power, in terms of playing games, our cooler is then not having to deal with as much heat. And so the VRAM temperatures that are now coming out a little bit hotter are actually able to stay at the same temperature because the cooler is having to do less work because the GPU core is running more efficiently. So generally when you undervolt for gaming, that's the combination you should be doing, especially on RTX 3000 series and now RTX 4000 series. And in today's results, hopefully I showed you guys why I like to use Curve Optimizer even with the RTX 4090. Now, I'm going to say that I did, you guys did message me um, on Facebook. A lot of you guys messaged me saying to check out Optimum Tech's video. I watched through that and he recommended against undervolting. I thought it was a little bit weird because even in his own video, he showed that the power consumption was going down and the FPS results were virtually the same. But another thing he started talking about was the GPU core clocks. And basically one thing when it comes to that, it's a new architecture. You would have to ask the NVIDIA engineers why he's seeing that higher clock speed and slightly lower FPS. But at the same time, all I look at when I do tests is the power that's coming out of my wall and also the FPS that's coming out of my screen. And the power's going down, the FPS is still remaining very smooth as well. And the experience is remaining stutter free too and basically I'm gaining more efficiency. Though in terms of Optimum Tech's video and the advice he gave out in that video, I disagree with it. I think you should be undervolting your RTX 4090, especially if you wanna get the best efficiency out of it while you're playing games. But also when you're doing these tests, I think he was using the beta driver still. You may wish to use the official launch day driver, which is what the public's going to be using. So that might've been a reason he was seeing weird results. But also there's another possibility, and that is he could have been in that 1% echelon of people that just got poor silicon. And basically when it comes to how NVIDIA bins these products, they'll have standard deviations and they'll actually make these power profiles. And this is the same for AMD and Intel with their CPUs and AMD with their GPUs. They'll make these power profiles that are more aggressive and that's to accommodate for that 1%, the poorest 1% of silicon. And the reason they do this is because they don't want returns. 
And if they have a return, that can mean that they go buy the competitor's product. The retailer's got to deal with all the frustration. The company, if it's a board partner, they got to deal with the RMA. And so it just creates a lot of frustration. And of course, it can lose brand loyalty. So that's the reason why these cards in general, you're going to have anywhere from decent undervolting to good undervolting to great undervolting. That's the reason these companies do it so they can get away with that 1% not being disappointed in the product. But for the majority of people that buy these graphics cards and CPUs, they're gonna benefit either a little bit to immensely from undervolting their products. Though that topic, we could go into a whole separate video with uh, statistics, it would get pretty complicated. But if you guys maybe wanna see that, then do let us know in the comments. Though we can add that video to the backlog of other videos that I have to get done for you guys, and I will be getting onto that. So if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And there will be questions of the day later. Sorry guys, just really busy. And I'll catch you on the next one. If you stayed this far, enjoying that Tech Yes content, you know what to do, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye. We are going to have to ask if we want to live in a different world.